Hello and welcome to episode 5 in my let's play of uh, Satisfactory version 1.0. I'm Rory from Ramatime and welcome to this video. It's a beautiful night. It's a perfect night to be developing space elevator parts and unlocking more things in the MAM and all of that. So, that is going to be the topic of today's video. Now, in the last video we got our steel up and running. So I now have a bin here that is slowly filling up with the important steel and pipes and beams and stuff. And that's lovely because it means that I can unlock things and do things and move forward. So that's great. So let's stop messing around and waffling. Let's get the, uh, the old intro out of the way. Yes, so I've got a few things I'm going to do today. Um, one is I'm going to unlock all of these. We're going to go through... I've got enough stuff now. I can just unlock everything here. So that's that's brilliant. We can unlock all of Tier 4, which means we can start making the space elevator parts. There's also a couple of things in the MAM that I need to, to do. Which One of which is uh, I want to unlock the AO limiter so that I can then unlock the smart splitter. Because I really, really need that um, and it would be very, very handy. Also, I want to get these Mark II power poles and, and so on. I also really want to start unlocking some more of this tree. I really want the explosives. I want that extra hand equipment slot. You know, you can always do a, you know, plenty of things if you've got more hands. But uh, yeah, I just need to grab some sulfur and so on. But in order to uh, to unlock the caterium stuff or caterium, caterium, whatever, I need to start making quick wire. So what I'm thinking is over at my power plant and steel mill is a caterium node that is ripe for the taking um, and I think it would make a really perfect little quick wire factory just a dedicated single small building purely dedicated to making quick wire which can then get exported into a tractor on this same route and get brought back to the main base I might as well not gonna be a huge amount of effort but first check this out there's a little doggo he's run away Come back. Doggo. Our last doggo got named. I don't, I'm not sure where he's gone now, but that was Spike. He's now gone. Um, he's around somewhere, but here's a new one. So, if you're going to name him, please chuck a comment in. And, and we'll give Doggo a name. And that'll be good. Good Doggo. Why is he suddenly getting brighter? Ah! So yes, while we make our way over to this factory... I just wanted to quickly mention a little bit about this playthrough and kind of what the goal is and, and so on. In terms of the goal, I don't really have one yet. I kind of want to just work my way through all of the game as the uh, the version 1.0 as you know as close to this is being the first time I get to play this game. I know it's not, but I'm you know I'll never get that back. This is the closest it'll ever be. I want to build a kind of mega city. I want to build lots of individual buildings and I want to make them all look really amazing. That's a key important point. But I kind of feel like I need to be at least into phase four of the space elevator before I can really start putting the efforts into those. Just because I need to unlock so much stuff. But we are getting there. Today we're going to unlock so many more things. We're going to unlock the Mark III belts, which is going to make all of this run at full pelt. Because at the moment this is completely bottlenecked because of the belt. We're going to unlock the smart splitters, which is going to help. And I'm going to set something up to start resource syncing valuable items so that I can get enough tickets to start unlocking some of those wonderful aesthetic bits and pieces. So over here is the Caterium mine next to the iron one that I can't get into. It's only a normal one. I'm not sure if there's any more around here actually. Yeah. Immediately just the one. So I'm going to build just a small building here. It might be a, like a tall, narrow building, I think. That's something interesting, and that's what we're going to do today. But yeah, so in terms of this playthrough, though, I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing through it. This isn't a speed run. I haven't been recording myself building all of the detailed stuff just because I figured that that, that would be quite boring to watch. And I might make it so that I do a lot more of the detailed stuff inside of a, maybe a live stream every now and then. I'm not sure. Feed, feed it back to me. Tell me in the comments. What do you want to see? If you want to see more detail in the actual episodes... I'll make them longer and I'll put more detail in, but I'm just not sure. Uh, I, I never know the best way to do this. To me, just like the highlights is, is good enough. But yeah, like I say, you tell me. If you don't tell me anything, I'll just carry on doing exactly what I'm already doing because I'm enjoying myself, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So, what do I need to do first? Well, absolutely, typically, I need to be back at the main base so that I can uh, 
unlock all the stuff. I can't wait to unlock hypertubes. I'm thinking that I might make this into a proper road as well. A two carriageway road. But before we start doing all of that, let's have a look. So blueprints first. Pretty sure I've got everything I need for this right here. No, of course not. Okay, now I have. So we'll try that again. There we go. Right. Boom. <laughs> Milestone reached. Blueprints reduce repetitive building tasks, further optimizing your progression towards saving Earth with its beautiful ecosystems, abundant natural resources, and sunsets over frolicking puppies and kittens. The blueprint designer allows you to build and combine structures once and then duplicate that configuration effortlessly. Any complaints about the spatial restrictions will only reveal your own inefficiencies. <laughs> Very clever. Oh, I like that. I like I love how they're letting it all out in <laughs> through Ada. All the all those frustrations of being a game developer are all coming out through Ada. I absolutely love it. And I can totally relate. Right. So this one is going to be next obviously we've got to wait for the pod to come back. It's going to be four, four minutes but that's cool. Now while we wait for this, I'm just going to do something because I'm getting fed up with having to manually craft modular frames. This is super mucky, but it's only temporary. We're going to need quite a few for this, for unlocking all of these. We need about 300 or so, and I, I just can't be bothered to manually craft another 300. So I am going to set up a super simple modular frame machine, which I'll fill up now. And we'll put a load of them in there. <laughs> Look at, oh, that's, oh, that's cursed. We're not doing that. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's not much better. <laughs> We're going to max it out with the overclocking. There we go. Uh, and I'm just going to fill up those two bins quick. Well, not fill. I'm just going to put enough in there so it just keeps it ticking over for a, quite a while. There we go. Right. It is only temporary. It will just sort the problem out for the time being. And uh, for now, let's unlock the next one. Babouche! Milestone reached. Improved storage containers and the conveyor belt Mark III provide the obviously necessary tools for improving your current setup. Production speed is of the essence after all. So work hard. Work as if every person you have ever or will ever love is depending solely on the choices that you make. <laughs> because they are. <laughs> Warning. Fix-it psychologists recommend not dwelling on the crushing mental and physical strain of your responsibilities and simply continuing to be productive. Hard work has repeatedly proven to be the best cure for any kind of stress. Now back to work. <laughs> to be fair, I can kind of relate to that anyway. Um, right, what is next? So we can't do that one yet, yet, yet. It's going to be that. Oh, the hypertubes. Oh, well, we can't do that just yet. We need to do this one first so that we unlock these. Okay, well, no, it's all coming together. It's all going well. There's something insanely therapeutic about this, right? When you actually just stop and look at what is actually happening in this game. Honestly, it is not saying too much to say this is a masterpiece of a game. It's just so good. Okay, so I managed to get a few bits and pieces done. You might notice up there, there is a new building. And this is the Caterium building. So let's just have a quick head over there and we'll go and have a look-see. Looks pretty cool, huh? Obviously it's it's still under construction, but technically it should work. So that's what we're gonna do is fire it up. Excuse me, birdie. But yeah, just a, a quick tour. So I've created this area over here. So this is the ramp that the tractor can collect the caterium from. It's designed so that you see lots of things on the outside of the building. It's a bit of a cube style. And again, I'm gonna add more to it, like make it look a little bit smarter once I've unlocked a few more things. I haven't even got windows at the moment and yeah, I want a lot of it to be glass. These two huge conveyor lifts, basically that's where the two runs of Caterium will come out. And the way I got them so long, so there used to be a trick. You used to, if you, basically if you went from a, a lift, you could only go so far and then it would, it would kind of limit it. But if you put a, a tile with two of these floor holes in, you could then basically go for as long as you want. However, it seems that that doesn't work anymore and that there's now a limit to that. So what I did was I added the uh, the floor tiles, I added the, the holes, did, did the connections and then removed the floor tiles. And it doesn't look too bad. I'll come up with something. I'll make it look kind of interesting with something that goes across there to make it look like it's intentional. 
probably using um, those bars that you unlock that I can't think what they're called now. But uh, anyway, that's all stuff that's going to come once I uh, get some more tickets. But let's head up to the first floor. So we've got one normal Caterium node that is now overclocked. So this will produce 270 Caterium ingots a minute. Which goes into this first floor, which is the smelting floor. Well, it's the first smelting floor, which is three, uh, three smelters. And then that produces a line that goes up. So if I remember rightly, it's 15... 30, 45. So this is producing 45 ingots that goes up to the second floor, which is basically replicated the same thing again, which is now adding another 45. So we've now got 90 going up. And then that 90 comes up to the floor up here that has four, which goes into these, which take 12 per minute to create 60. So there'll be 120, 240 being created out of this floor. And that also overflows and goes up to the next floor, which is basically the same thing again. It's another four doing the same thing again. So it's all overflowing up here. But now what happens is all the output goes out sideways. Oh, I haven't actually connected this side. I've only done this side, look. But all the output goes out sideways here so that you'll see them all going up to the top. And then basically up on the very, very top floor. Whoa, that was close. It's just whiz up here. Ooh, we have a door. It's just basically a sorting level. And that's just by essentially merging it all together into two lanes, which should be two 270 belts of, of quick wire. So it's a little factory. It's just using one node, but it should be generating a ton of quick wire. And yeah, just needs to be started up. But like I said, I've just realized I didn't connect this side. So I need to do this quick. So we'll just create some, whoa, some quick temporary scaffolding. Uh, I need to do it on the next floor down, actually. Okay. So the way I did this, pretty simple. It came to there. That one can go straight up. Straight up. And I came to there. And we just connect those like that. And that's it. Right, so we've just got to power it. So shall we go and power it up and see what it looks like? Let's do it. Now we'll unlock switches soon. And when we, when we, once we've unlocked switches, I then any building like this, I like to sort of separate with a, an isolator switch somewhere. But yeah, effectively it's this guy here. We just need to connect this somewhere into the system. Make a decision here. Right, we're gonna come this way. Right, there we go. So that's all alive. Oh, I was wrong. Oh, because it's a normal node. It's only doing 150 per minute. Oh, apologies. I made a mistake with my maths. Hmm. Oh, so it won't be quite as maxed out as I thought it would. In my brain, I had that this was uh, overclocked right, but okay, whatever. Right, getting loud and noisy. Let's get up to that smelting floor. That's working. Hello, we've got a wrong belt over there. Upgrade that belt, head up to the next floor. There we go, so that's coming in. As always, it will take a little while just to overflow in. Right, so what's happening here? Oh, they're going to... Oh. Hang on a minute, what's... What have I done here? Okay, so they should come up there, and they should join in with that, and then head up there. Why is that not going up? I haven't connected it. <laughs> what a nana. Okay, there we go, so that's now heading up. Right, good, we've got our golden ingots heading upwards which should join in with all of this the overflow that heads upstairs there we go ah there we go there we go oh what's happened here look that's a bit weird connect you properly there we go so they're now heading up they're heading up that's all looking good there we go There we go, our ingots are heading down, which means that they will then start working their way in there. This is a Mark 1 belt. That should be a Mark 3. I know this bit's a little bit ugly. I might come up with something just to make this bit, this area look a little bit prettier. I'm just not sure what yet. And there we go. 
Nice. See, and that's, I like designing buildings with stuff on the outside. I know it looks it looks a little bit crazy at the moment, but I think it's going to look really smart once I get the, all the proper panelling on it, add some colour, add some windows, um, proper doorways. I just love when you see all the movement, like stuff moving around. But yeah, that, sh that should fill up quite nicely. I might add a... Yeah, I might add some storage buffers and stuff, and then possibly I'll... I'll probably stick an awesome sink on here because I feel like this will be creating so much that we won't actually need to use. Probably sink quite a lot of it. Excellent. The one downside is if I did want to put more caterium in here. I, I always struggle to say I say caterium. It's caterium. But yeah, I don't think there's another one near for quite some way. Yeah, there's one close back to the base. Ah, I mean technically I could probably set up a tractor route to bring that in. I don't know if it's really worth it. But yes, so I'll get a tractor taking this back to the base. But for the time being, we'll take our 300. We're going to go and unlock smart splitters. Actually, I'll, I'll get a few more. I'll tell you something that is cool, is when you come up to the top of this building, the view is incredible. You can see so far. But we could also see our base. So a nice way to get back to our base. It's just to parachute the entire way there. It's just really cool. And I like looking at the building going backwards. Yeah. This is going to be a village, I think. That's that's the way it's going to work. My mega city is going to be made up of villages. <laughs> right, let's have a look. So, Caterium. I want to unlock you. Research completed. AI limiter recipe unlocked. New Caterium research available. Caterium. Caterium. I don't know why I can't say it. Caterium. <laughs> Power switch. Priority. Yeah, I want all of that because that's fun. Um, so we've got to make some AI limiters. Which means we can now unlock smart splitters. Unlock, please. And tell me all about them. Smart splitter unlocked. The Smart Splitter offers advanced settings that can improve conveyor belt logistics. Thank you very much. Right. Well, there we go. So, that's that. I mean, over here, bullet guidance, homing rifle ammo. Yeah, I would like to do the bullet stuff. But I'm still here. I've got to make some of the um, the black powder. So, I guess uh, a munitions factory is going to be on the cards next. Just something simple that just starts making me all the black powder stuff. So, I need to find a sulfur node and build a little building there. That's going to be a that's going to be its own episode, I think. Not in this one. What am I doing next? It was the the space elevator parts, but also I've got these hard drives. I really, really must start organizing these. So, hard drives. Scan. So they take 10 minutes each, um, and we'll start scanning the hard drives, try and find some alternate recipes. Now, one tip that I've seen in a few videos um, is that when you get your recipe, it, it now holds it, and you don't have to select it there and then. So there's a kind of theory that if you don't select if you get basically uh, an option that is one good one one bad one you don't, and you don't need that good one yet you keep it in there so that that bad one that is with it can't get brought up again with another one so therefore it effectively reduces the chances of bad ones coming up i've got obviously only i've only got four at the moment but uh, yeah i'll scan all of these and um you know make it so that uh, i get my bit of a list because uh, i don't know there's a couple of alternate recipes i would quite like but um, I'm not too worried at the moment. I'm just enjoying playing it and whatever. So anyway, let's uh, carry on. Uh, but anyway, now let's uh, unlock the next one of these. What do we need? We don't got enough. But if you remember, I just built this simple little thing just to make me some modular frames for now. That's another project. It's going to be a whole modular frames factory. But uh, if you've seen any of my last videos, they become very unwieldy very quickly. Anyway, let's get the advanced steel production underway. Baboosh! Milestone reached. The Miner Mark II allows extraction of resources from nature to fix it at twice the speed of the Mark I model. Miners can be directly upgraded to Mark II without removing the Mark I model, just like conveyor belts and other upgradable infrastructure. Unfortunately, setting up the production of advanced steel parts and project part number three, automated wiring, will not be as easy. Every moment you delay reduces the chances of saving humanity. <laughs> I will not show you the predictions, it would only demotivate you. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the pod, and then I remembered that uh, you can actually make uh, black powder in the... Uh, it's in the workshop, for some reason, because I looked in my... on the craft bench and it wasn't there, so I thought, ah, oh, we must have to do it in assemblers. But you don't. You do it in a in a. You do it in here. I think you can you can do it in constructors though, 
So I just thought, do you know what? While I'm waiting for the uh, while I'm waiting for the pod to return, seems as you now just press spacebar to start the <laughs> crafting. I might as well just let it sit and do this for a bit and um, get myself a bunch of black powder just so I can unlock the rest of those tears in the man. And that's enough for the moment. Let's have a look. We can't do it because we're doing a hard drive. Oh, <laughs> at least there's only a minute to go on that. Okay, so the hard drive has just completed. So yeah, so this is how it looks now. Hard drive analysis completed. Alternative recipe selection available in the MAM. Oh. See, I have a sneaky suspicion that both of these are actually potentially quite good. Um, because that makes a lot of screws out of one of those. So that does resolve a, a lot of screw issues. This one, considering I've just built my steel factory, this does mean a potentially much more... Yeah... That's actually a really good one. So that is one that I'm going to want to keep. Something I didn't notice actually in this model. Again, I, just, I love the way you come into this game and every time you do, you find something new you hadn't spotted before. The hard drives appear in this little area when they're being scanned. Now in the old MAM setup, it used to appear and get scanned with lasers. Um, like it was like a central point, if I remember rightly. So let's just see what, what happens if we, if we do this. Where does it... Oh, it does appear in there, just for a moment. Okay, so we've now got our detonator. Detonator and basic nobelisk unlocked. Most obstacles can be cleared with the basic nobelisk. It is most effective against organic material and is able to destroy small boulders and porous rock. Deployed nobelisks will stick to the first solid surface they touch and cue on the universal detonator. If you do not recall the order in which you deployed the Nobelists, remember Fixit does not take responsibility for any harm caused due to human error, even if those errors are genetic. Right, the pod is back, so we can now unlock. Ooh, do we go with the power? Do we go with hypertubes? Let's start with hypertubes. And. Sabouche! Come to me, my jungle friends. Right. Milestone reached. By adding hypertube entrances at both ends of hypertubes, pioneers can achieve two-way travel between locations. They are also <laughs> error percent safer than jump pads. You dreamed of moving across factories like valued resources such as rocks and water and fix it listen to your dreams. We watched them. We took extensive notes. Hypertubes. Because fix it makes pioneers closely monitored dreams come true. <laughs> Right, so we've got 10 minutes on that, so while that's doing that, we will set to such... Uh, I really want to get to this rifle, but I, I haven't got plastics yet. I'm, I haven't got refineries all set up. That's, oh, that's Again, that's another enormous job to get done. But we can unlock this hand slot, so we'll do that. Compacted coal, we might as well do that. We we'll use one of our expanded. hard drives. I compounded Sulphur's tristatic atom matrix into a quadrimensional gate vortex. You can now carry more stuff. Nice one, Ada. Thank you very much. There it is. Right, so we'll unlock that one. It wastes a hard drive, but I'm pretty sure there's there's plenty around. Compacted coal unlocked. It is physically smaller and more powerful, but its carbon footprint remains enormous. This fuel upgrade can be used in coal-powered generators and vehicles. Right, so we can do compacted coal. Yeah, we've got to make some in order to... Yeah, we need package... Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot to do there still. Um, yeah, and that's a little way off because I haven't got plastics. Right, so, so yeah, my little plan, my little plan that I've got is that I want to, um, I want to get this unlocked. My idea is that I want to go out on a little adventure and just go around shooting all the, the, all the local wildlife. And then that will give me enough of the protein stuff so that I can then turn into DNA capsules, which I can then chuck in the sink. And that should give me enough tickets to unlock all the stuff to make my buildings nice, which means at that point I can then start, you know, building the main base and storage area because that's what I want. I'm, I'm leading up to building something where I'll have all my bins all lined up in a big corridor. Um, there'll be a system on the back of it that basically anything that gets full gets synced so therefore the awesome sink is being permanently filled up. There's, there's, yeah there's loads I want to do. Absolutely tons. However we've got one more thing to unlock on tier 4 and then it's a case of building all the stuff for the space elevator part and getting that next one done. Let's just keep on. Righty, righty, righty. Let's see, we can unlock this now. And baboosh. There we go. 
milestone we can now After several pioneers started exhibiting traumatic responses to power blackouts yeah Fixing develop mitigation tools recommended by your local therapist I'm going to build power a giant battery can hold somewhere. Excess power to <laughs> delay or prevent blackouts in the eventuality that your factory's power consumption exceeds production. To simplify, nice. these are rechargeable batteries. Power towers carry power lines for significantly greater distances than poles, facilitating factory expansion and exploitation of this environment for the good of Fixit and humanity. Excellent. So that's all really cool. That is everything in these two tiers unlocked. So next is to get these uh, smart elevator pieces going. So let's just see, because the smart plates have been just ticking over, over here. We should have a few in here. Oh, it looks like it's full. Yes. So we've actually, we've got enough of the smart plates. So really what we now need to do then is reconfigure all of this. The problem is, is that is also my my plates mm, 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 mm. what does what does what does we need so let's select a recipe so these need oh they need them oh I do need a I do need a frames factory oh and the status so how do we make status again okay okay so we need a frames and a status factory mm, 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 mm. status aren't too bad to be honest because I mean we've got tons of pipes we could probably build something quite simple here uh, maybe I make another floor and do it do it here. I just want to make, build a little dedicated building to those two things and just have them ticking over while I go off and do other stuff. But we're going to need something making modular frames. We need a modular frames building. So yeah, so I could, if I go and find a pure node and stick a Mark II Miner on it, I could build a simple modular frames one for now just to get me over this initial hurdle. Yeah. Okay, well I've got a ton of work to do. But first, there was something that I wanted to just quickly mention to you. And that was over here, at the, uh, the Caterium, Caterium node. Of course, I said about this being 150, it's because it's still only a Mark I Miner. I needed to unlock the Mark II Miner. I thought I had got that right in my brain. So we're going to just quickly get rid of this, get a Mark II Miner. We need to, uh, of course, a Mark II Miner uses two portable miners. So now we can try that again. Stick our Mark II Miner on. power it up and then we will do this 270 there we go and we should see that this now is a full belt which should then get this little quick wire factory running a lot better lovely lovely stuff so yeah so these these will start filling up a lot more I don't know if they'll be fully maxed I'm sure they they would be because I said didn't I yeah, it was 100 and, 120 on each side so 240 per floor, so two floors of 240, that's almost two full belts. But I'm looking at those and I'm thinking that perhaps it's not running at full capacity even even still. I don't know, because I would have I I expected to see those getting turned over quicker. And I'm not seeing, I, don't, I think there's a problem with the second floor. Oh, we need to nip up there, I think there's an issue. There is, my whole second floor isn't running. <laughs> I forgot to connect the power. What? How can there be no power? The power goes down there. I don't get it. Oh dear. Right, well this one doesn't have any power for some reason. Oh yeah, look, that's, that's the problem. There we go. It's because I thought it was connected to that, but that wasn't doing anything. Right, let's just head back upstairs. We should... Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. There we go. Right, but now that's... Oh dear. There's a lot of troubleshooting required on this uh, <laughs> on this building. Right, so it looks like that conveyor lift is broken. There we go. Right, so that's doing its thing. That's doing its thing. There we go. That's all good. That side looks like it's all good. There we go. Right, now everything is moving. So now that's better. That's much more like I was expecting. Oh yeah. Look at all that gold. Yeah, so just slightly less than permanently full belts. Although it might have backed up a little bit, but but yeah, that's kind of what I was much more what I was expecting. What a view. Doesn't that look cool? It's kind of got Death Star vibes about it, hasn't it? Only not round, more square. 
So yeah, my next job here is going to be to set up a little overflow sink system so that basically anything that's not getting used just gets sunk, sunk into a sink just because this might as well be permanently running. Oh, this is so good. Excellent, excellent. Much, much better. There we go. But yeah, I think uh, this, this will be it for today. I think we've covered enough. I don't want the episode to go on too long. I'm assuming about half an hour is good for these episodes. Again, feel free to make, mention in the comment, you know, if you feel that uh, they should be longer, shorter, whatever. But yeah, that's my, my beastie Caterium building. Join me next time, and uh, I think I might blow those up and find out what's behind there, because that looks interesting. <laughs> uh, and also, we will actually make a start on those space elevator parts, and... In the next episode, I suspect we will probably put them in and complete the next phase and see what happens to that big beastie in the sky. As well as some refining, and I need to set up the tractor and all of that. So we'll cover all of that in the next one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit the little bell and then it'll tell you. Oh, Ram has just put up a new video. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.